Hey guys, we are wrapping up our series in Cordoba, Spain. This is the third and final installment. This week we'll do a little bit of walking around and we'll also tour the Viana Palace as well as the Archaeological Museum. Let's go! So far we really have enjoyed our time in Cordoba, Spain and this is a small city with about 350,000 people. This is one of the city walls and this is on Syrian Street. This is the Almodovar Gate, which consists of mostly Christian construction dating back to the 14th century. It was restored back in 1802, specifically the battlements and the walkway. Here are some Roman ruins in the middle of the city. I could have uh, skipped this, but if you're in the area, stop by. Cordoba is known for its courtyards and each year they actually have a festival to celebrate those courtyards. Because we missed that, we made our way to Viana Palace which has 12 courtyards. This palace was built back in 1492 and it remained privately owned until 1980 and it was open to the public in 1981 and it was in that same year that it was named a National Historical Artistic Monument and in 1983 it was named a Historical Artistic Garden. We paid 10 euros each to get in. Here's a little kitchen area off of Patio de las Gatos or Patio of the Cats. This is the oldest documented courtyard in Cordoba and the flowers are nice. It's not as nice as the entrance uh, courtyard, but I guess this is a really good place to let your cats run wild. So we're walking into the third patio, which is very nice, and it has water lilies, which I like. And this is known as the Courtyard of the Oranges, which is a typical Muslim courtyard. Loved it out here. Love the calming effect of the water feature. This is Patio de la Rejas, or Patio of the Bars, which is a symbol of power. And this is one of, I believe, two courtyards that actually look out from the palace. This is the Patio of the Pool, and it is currently used by the gardening team. And the water here bubbles up from a well on the property, and it's used to water all of the plants in the palace. This is the courtyard of the well, and as the name implies, there's a well in the middle of the courtyard, and I thought I'd take a peek and look down the well, which is terrifying for me because I'm afraid of heights, but I was fortunate that there is a grate, so it's not as scary, and it prevents people from climbing down there. You know somebody's going to do it. This is the courtyard of the gardeners and it is a vertical garden and it got its name because the gardeners used to store their tools here. This is the courtyard of the chapel, and surprise, there's a chapel right off the courtyard. And let's take a peek, and here is the little chapel. We couldn't go in, but we could look in. So we made our way to the innermost courtyard of the palace, and this is the courtyard of the archives.
We made our way through the palace, and as we are leaving, we get to our last courtyard, which is Courtyard of the Gate, and this used to be access to the palace, and it lost that distinction in the 19th century. Hey guys, we are here at the Archaeological Museum in Cordoba, getting ready to go in and see what they've got. Let's check it out. Nice abs. That's a pretty cool table leg. That's one big chamber pot and it's deep. Glad I don't have to clean that thing out. I bet you didn't know this, but cremation was the typical funeral practice back in the day, and the ashes would then be buried in a casket like this, along with symbolic. These are the remains of the Roman theater in Cordoba, and these are underneath the museum, so the museum sits atop of these ruins, and there were multiple entrances that the patrons used to access the theater, but which entrance they used was dependent on the social class that they belonged in. The museum had a patio exhibit and I really liked this courtyard and the water feature and I was commenting to Garrett how nice it looked and he said he wished they'd take out the fake flowers. I actually thought they were real so that just goes to show you you need to pay attention to the little details but it was super nice out here. So this sculpture here is actually quite big and you might not be able to tell from the video but even though it's missing part of the legs, its arms, and its head, this sculpture is at least six feet tall, maybe larger, and it is probably two, two and a half feet wide. Massive. Okay, so we just finished touring the Archaeology Museum, and it was really great. Uh, a few things about it. It's not very large. We were in there for maybe 30 to 45 minutes. Of course, it has what you'd expect to see in there. you got your columns, statues, pottery. Uh, in the basement, they're excavating some Roman ruins. That was a nice touch. And I think the best thing about it was that the quality of things was good. There was stuff, but it wasn't just an overwhelming amount of things. They had a, a number of things for each time period, all laid out chronologically, all organized in many different languages, very easy to follow. After we left outside, they have a couple courtyards and some patios with some larger statues and some large mosaics. So like I said, we're there about 35 to 40 minutes and had a great time. Hope you liked this week's video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, do all of the things. Check out our blog at slowtravelchronicles.com and stay tuned for next week's video where we move on to Valencia.